Hello everyone, today is lecture number 11 from the geotechnical course application using my DAS GTS and X and in this uh, lecture we are going to talk about uh, two very important uh, uh, topics we will talk about modified chem clay and we will mainly talk about the consolidation analysis consolidation analysis is one uh, of the other major topics in geotechnical engineering and uh, everyone is dealing with clay material as uh, to face and has ca to calculate the consolidation settlement in order to understand what is consolidation, we will go first through this small presentation. So let's imagine we have our uh, uh, our uh, clay soil uh, here, and clay soil when it's filled with water, the water takes time to get out from the uh, clay because of the permeability of the clay is very small. So when you start to pressure the clay, it takes time to go out. So consolidation is this uh, fundamental thing that uh, describes the uh, escape of the water from the clay material with time. So it's a time dependent uh, definition. So in order for the water to escape from the clay, the, the clay has to be surrounded uh, by uh, permeable layers. So it could be from above or beneath uh, the, uh, the layer. So uh, the water can be escaped. As we can see here in this figure, we can see that if we have the clay material at this depth and the groundwater table at this depth and the sand is here and uh, sand is here so when we start to add vertical load stress and this vertical stress start to increase the water will start to uh, the water start to escape from both uh, direction for uh, in sand this direction and this direction so consolidation is volume change in the saturated soil caused by uh, ex uh, ex explosion of pool water from loading so there will be escape for pool water as we described in other lectures that our soil is consists us from three main components uh, mainly from two the solids and the voids and the void is always well filled with air or with water so when we start to load our soil uh, the uh, the soil start particles start to get closer to each other but at time zero the water starts since the water is not gonna escape uh, escape because of the permeability of the clay material is very low at this time the water start to uh, carry uh, load with the soil particle and by time uh, when this water start to dissipate and get out uh, from the void uh, there will be a uh, change in the uh, soil and there will be settlement uh, occurred there so so as we can see here sand is poor uh, pressure increase dissipation rapidly due to the high permeability yes, of course and the clay pore pressure dissipates slowly due to low permeability here here we can see that at time of initial loading like let's say at time t equals zero when we start to load our problem here at time t equals zero the clay material will start to uh, the water in the clay material will start to dissipate uh, like at time equals zero uh, the, the water will start to carry uh, all the, the load uh, because the compressibility of the water is very high so at time t equals zero the total stress will equal uh, the bore water pressure by increasing time so as we can see here uh, bore water take initial change in the vertical loading so delta sigma or the increase in the water pressure it takes all through the water since the water is incompressible material or the bulk modulus is very high so soil skeleton doesn't see any initial loading that's great then by time as we can see here so as we can see here the total incre uh, stress increase it increases by delta sigma but all this delta sigma has increased through 
has been taken through delta u or the bore water pressure so the effective stress increase here like the, uh, as we know that the total stress is equal to the effective stress plus pore water pressure but the change here in the effective stress in the water which equals the effective uh, the total stress minus pore water pressure will equal zero because the increase here is equal to the total stress so this effective stress increase will equal zero but by time now t doesn't equal zero to from zero to infinity at this time there will be sharing to carry the load between the water and the soil so the total stress here will equal or the increase in uh, stress will equal partially water for, uh, from water and partially from the soil so we can see here there is an increase in delta w and it's still less than uh, the increase in stress and as we can see here there is increase in the water by and in the stress in the soil so bore water pressure here increases due to the initial loading dissipation and the soil skeleton takes load as bore water pressure start to decrease but still water can take some load now at time equal infinity the at this time the soil is dissipated totally and the soil start to carry all the load so as we can see here the increase in the stress the bull water pressure increase equals zero and the whole effective stress goes to the soil so the poor water increase due to the initial loading completely dissipate so delta u equals zero and soil skeleton has taken loading effective stress increase now equal to vertical stress increase and now we are going to this uh, model which simulates uh, this problem with this uh, graph so at the beginning is this is the initial case imagine we have uh, this spring analogy with the soil is simulated through this spring and and the water around it so if this valve is closed and we have weight here so all the load goes to the water because it's incompressible material but when we start uh, to open this uh, valve the water start to dissipate with load so it's the water uh, start to take less load and the spring start to take load until all the load dissipate until the water dissipate and the soil start to carry all the load in order to uh, in order to study the, uh, the consolidation uh, consolidation we go to experiment called odometer test odometer test it gives us some it help us to understand more about the uh, consolidation of the clay material and uh, uh, and it's considered one dimension uh, problem as we can see here the consolidometer or odometer test as uh, it's mentioned in other uh, topic uh, other box uh, if we look at here this is a glass uh, box and it's filled with water we put a porous plate so the soil doesn't escape from above and the bottom and this is uh, the soil uh, this is the ring which the soil con uh, in big, uh, like contained inside it and we start to load and we have our soil our dial gauge which in, uh, measure the soil settlement uh, so at the beginning as we can see here uh, to uh, or like to uh, have an overview about this uh, about this uh, test at the beginning we start to add a small load to this uh, problem and we start to this uh, arrangement of test and we start to uh, measure the uh, in, uh, the settlement in this spacement with time up to 24 meters and we have the records every one minute two minutes four minutes eight minutes 16 up to we reach to 1404 uh, 40 uh, minute uh, then we start to increase the load to the double and uh, we start to uh, take the uh, readings again for 24 hours now we repeat this for like five six times and we start to take the reading every 24 hours then at this time we start to decrease the load again uh, gradually and we take the measurement for 
24 hours for each uh, case this is a very long uh, test it could be taken up to 10 days and we take the measurement uh, every uh, all the time for uh, 24 hours every day uh, 24 hours uh, every day and at the end we have a small table which is the um, uh, which represent uh, the settlement at each load after 24 hours uh, during the loading and unloading process so this is like a conclusion about uh, how we can perform the consolidation test the 1d consolidation uh, test equipment as we can see here this is the sh uh, shape of the uh, uh, of our uh, our problem and uh, here the loading increment data at the beginning the at the beginning of loading the deformation will be uh, elastic then we go through the consolidation part here and this is the secondary consolidation and the uh, initial com uh, compression or primary caused by preloading then stage two uh, the excess water pressure dissipate and corresponding to soil volume change so in the second part here of loading uh, there will be dissipation of water pressure that's why the, the soil start to settle finally secondary settlement occur after the excess pore water pressure dissipate due to the plastic deformation and readjustment of the soil particle and this happen here with more time there will be readjustment and reshape of the particle and plastic deformation here we can look at uh, what happened during consolidation the void pressure um, plot as we can see here if we have our spacement and this is the initial area of the spacement when and we knew that this is spacement when we have it idealized it's some solids and some voids and when we start to load this and we know that the initial voids ratio is v voids over vs this is the initial voids ratio so the initial voids ratio also equal like the, vo the volume of the voids over the volume of the solid which is equal area area is the cross section area here and it's equal in both uh, for the same but the difference here it's in the height so the total the volume of the void is equal to the total volume minus the uh, the height of the total spacement minus hs and this is hs in order to calculate the hs it's equal uh, ws over a uh, gs gamma water the specific gravity is equal to uh, is equal to the solid unit weight over the gamma water so the solid unit weight it's equal to hs by area it gives us v solid and uh, ws so ws over v solid equal gamma solid so gs equal gamma solid over gamma water so we can calculate hs if we have the specific gravity of the soil and the weight of the solids or the dry material and it's a very important uh, coefficient to have when we work with consolidation then after this uh, the void ratio plot after after we calculate to calculate to plot the first void ratio with effective F pressure as we said before now we increase the effective pressure and we get the settlement so the settlement here is it's delta h so delta h is the settlement we calculate from the odometer at each loot case after 24 hours and we can get HS if we have uh, GS here so we can calculate delta uh, voids ratio so if we have delta voids ratio and we have the initial voids ratio we can calculate the new voids ratio at each loading and unloading step so this is the way we can draw our curve then we follow the same steps again uh, again and again to draw all the points of the curve e1 and e2 reaching every one by completing uh, this uh, graph now looking at this is the graph uh, when we cal uh, calculate all the nodes and this is the loading and this unloading and this is when we are loading again so when we start to load it moves from a to b c then we unload it through c d and when you unload it again it takes this unload again so 
uh, we can see a permanent deformation here. So the final E log uh, sigma plot consists of return number of load and unloading uh, increment to definition of clay based in history. So now we calculate two important things. The normally consolidated uh, NM, this presents the overburden pressure in the most soil has even uh, the soil have ever seen so uh, normally uh, uh, normally consolidated which as I, as we as described this is the overburden uh, overburden pressure uh, so it's gamma by h the over consolidated uh, clay is the presence over burning pressure is less than uh, the soil has experienced in the past the maximum effective bust uh, pressure is called the pre consolidation pressure so this two definition is like we can calculate the over burning pressure by multiplying the gamma of the soil by the height of our at the depth and we can compare this with the stress the soil has in its history if it's equal uh, if it's equal or if it's equal to the overburdening uh, pressure uh, or uh, or our uh, it, it's at this time it's called normally consolidated but if the effective or overburdening pressure is larger than the is larger than uh, this value it means that it's uh, pre-consolidated pre but if the present overburdening pressure uh, uh, the overburning pressure or is less than uh, the soil what experience is the past we call this the soil is now is already over consolidated because it's already has been improved before like we already the soil has been loaded like this and it's unloaded again then we start to load it again at this case the soil is already experienced consolidation it's in its history in order to calculate the pre-consolidation uh, the pre-consolidation uh, pressure we start to draw the relation between the voice ratio and the effective stress and at the highest point in the curve or in the middle of this curve here we take a horizontal line a b and we take a tangent from a to c and we divide this angle into through f so from point uh, and uh, so the intersection between the line uh, G H with this uh, line F uh, A D uh, get us point F. So we take a perpendicular line from F here, and this is value of the pre consolidation pressure. So again, we start to draw A B, uh, then A C. We divide the angle like A C is a tangent. This is horizontal. We divide it and we extend H. Uh, G to uh, uh, cut uh, like to intersect with A D at point F. We take a vertical line here to get this point. So if we have sigma prime C, this is the pre-consolidation stress, and we divide it by the effective stress or the overburdening stress, we get a value called OCR or the over-consolidation ratio if this value uh, if this value equal one that means the soil is normally consolidated if it's larger than one that means that the soil is over consolidated so uh, sigma uh, so general guideline to the soil to be normally consolidated if it's uh, from one to two and if it's larger than two we can describe it as over consolidated soil So possible cause of over consolidated soil preloading uh, fluctuate with the groundwater table. If there is a fluctuation in the water table, some improvement would happen and we could cause over consolidated soil. So there could be some disturbance in the soil. We are not interested now in the sensitivity. We just need to understand what's behind the theory of consolidation. So as we can see now, uh, this is our settlement 1D primary consolidation. So uh, there is some coefficient we can calculate here. The, as we can see here, this is a co coefficient after we uh, here it's called for normally consolidated clay the settlement using voids ratio we can use this equation for normally consolidated clay to calculate this so sp as the settlement and cc 
we will know what CC now. So CC is called the uh, consolidation uh, coefficient, and when we draw a relation bit here, so as we can see here. As we can see here, there are some coefficient. First coefficient is called CC. This is the slope of the virgin soil. This is the slope of the virgin soil CC. Or this is the slope of this curve. And uh, CS is the swelling index and we call CC is the compression index. So the slope of this curve is called CC and the slope of this curve, the unloading curve, we call it uh, uh, swelling index. So uh, we can now calculate if we have the thickness of the layer, the initial void ratio, and the overburdening stress, and the increase in the stress, we can calculate the settlement. If the soil is over, uh, if the soil is over consolidated, now uh, we can see that CC is the slope and the compression index and the swelling index is the same and here we can calculate it is a sharing between the uh, bet it's a sharing between the CR and CS so what is CR? CR is CR here is uh, the swelling index and uh, as we can see here it's CR sometimes CR is 10 times like it's 10 times CS like it has like some values so CR H over 1 plus E node uh, log uh, sigma uh, V over sigma node and what sigma uh, uh, VM it's the maximum uh, bust uh, pressure so this is the pressure like we can say this is the pre-consolidated uh, pressure or this is the pressure had been seen in the past plus CC uh, H over 1 plus E node uh, log so this is uh, related to the current uh, pressure uh, sigma node plus the increase in the stress over the overburdening stress. There are a lot of correlation to calculate the CC for undisturbed soil. They correlated to the liquid limit. We can calculate the liquid limit from Atterberg limits, and we calculate it. Uh, there are some equations related to this from different uh, scientists. As Witterzaghi uh, proposed this for the undisturbed and disturbed clay and the organic clay, and there are correlation with E node and here with the water content. So. Uh, through this correlation you can calculate uh, the value of the CC and the value of the CS is less, uh, less than this so sometimes it vary and there are a lot of correlation uh, between CC and CS uh, this is uh, CS estimated from other laboratory tests according to these values with limit, liquid limit and GS and E node uh, this is from uh, this equations related on E node and GS and liquid limit. So this is examples how to calculate CS and CR when you calculate with voids ratio and here. As we can see, this is some examples. We can share this presentation. Regarding the settlement from the secondary settlement, this is the equation and it depends on C alpha. C alpha is the slope as we can see here, delta E over G T2 by T1. So when we calculate this is void ratio, this is the relation between void ratio and the time. So uh, this is delta E by these two times and the slope we can calculate it. There is a relation with uh, uh, EB which is a void ratio at the end or the final void ratio uh, and uh, this is a C prime. So now we have a background to the mathematical solution. We don't need to go through the mathematical solution here. So, in order to calculate different factor like the TV, 
TV it's a time factor and depend on CV CV is a consolidation uh, coefficient uh, in the vertical uh, direction because there is a consolidation coefficient in the horizontal direction which uh, like uh, indicates the amount of consolidation happened uh, so we can calculate uh, CV is a characteristic for the soil so uh, we can say like uh, it has CV so each soil has its CV and its CV CH sorry so we can use these graphs for calculating this or from the consolidation As we can see here, these are different methods to calculate CV, the coefficient of consolidation. So we uh, at uh, each at one of the uh, loading uh, process, uh, stage, we can draw the relation between the deformation or the settlement and the time or log time or square root time. So if we have this relation here or we draw the relation it we will get this uh, shape so for the top here top part of the curve we take uh, one line here at the top uh, at time equal like t1 equal uh, whatever time any time here and we take t2 at uh, four, uh, four time uh, for t1 like four times the value of t1 so let's say this is at one second this will be at four seconds but look look the value and we take uh, we draw this line here horizontally we get the value x we repeat it again here so this is the time uh, zero consolidation happened and we do this here like we take we extend this line here and we take a tangential here and this is the time uh, this is uh, where 100 percent consolidation happened so we get like in the middle here so we get the time where like 50 percent of consolidation happened and we go to this equation here with TV like we can have the TV at uh, percentage like let's say 50% uh, consolidation and we can just get the value of the CV since we know the length or the depth of the sample there is another method here square root of time like Taylor uh, method and uh, this method he just uh, uh, extend uh, uh, this line here like he come and take this curve like here and he extend this line here like this and the extent here at this point it gives us 90 percent uh 90 percent consolidation and we take the time and we use it at t 90 percent from this table so we see this is 90 percent consolidation and we take this value and we start to substitute coefficient of consolidation so here he explaining how we can do this like as we can see in time log we already know tv and uh, we take the time t50 and uh, this h depend on the time like the path or the average longest drain path like let's say if this uh, the path is uh, the layer is between two permeable layers so it will be the thickness of the clay layer over two because the water will escape from above and down from top and down and if it's one of the layer is uh, unpermeable impermeable layer so it will be the total length of the clay and this is the other method here so we start to withdraw line a b through early portion uh, of the curve then we draw at 1.15 of ob then we follow this arrangement and we get our cv so this is an example here to calculate and uh, this is for the pre-consolidation already we knew when we use this for the normally consolidated and uh, settlement caused by structure loading we can take this into account the increase so we already now know an overview about <coughs> about consolidation <coughs> so the 
This graph shows us the relation between the degree of consolidation and the time factor. We can use this uh, graph, and we when we do like <coughs> want to do some improvement in the soil, we go through ground modification, consolidation through sand drains. So we start with uh, charge. Uh, if we have the charge here and we start to design our sand drain and we have uh, uh, the lateral uh, consolidation so we design him designs him so the, the soil like and we fill them with sand so uh, it's like a, a drainage bath for uh, for increasing the time for for fast, uh, like decreasing the time for settlement and this is uh, one of the ways like you start to drill here as we can see we start to fill it with uh, sand and com com uh, and after we fill it with uh, sand here like soils the water will like like this is the bottom of loose soil there is like scape here for the water in the other soil so all the water in the clay will go here and escape to the other layer there are other ways like BVD uh, which is like sheets like this and but they have a problem because after a while like the clay material fills them and uh, the water stop to escape but they are efficient this is the way how to install them as we can see we can make improvement very fast and we can follow this arrangement of uh, this is for the lateral for the lateral uh, way to for soil improvement or consolidation through consolidation or radial consolidation so radial consolidation we use ur this is the average degree of radial consolidation we calculate it through this equation this is tr like is the time factor in red in radial direction m we can cal calculate it through this equation where n is de this is the size of the uh, wheel and r uh, and rw is the sand drain radius and d is the effective diameter and we see this is rw and then we calculate tr which is equal cvr in radial direction by time over d it is the same like cvr the coefficient of radial consolidation and this is the time factor for radial consolidation cvr we can calculate it from this equation and we can get it this is the table we can use it for ur and time factor in radial direction and you substitute and you can start to design your system so as we can see this is a clay material this is filled with sand and this sand and this is just facilitate and accelerate the drainage and uh, there are different techniques as we can see for soil improvements through sand drains so consolidation is very important topic to take into account when you are modeling your problem because uh, a lot of improvement and a lot of cost will be taken and so you would need to understand the different factor so now to just see what is the important factor we see from consolidation first thing you need to know the coefficient of compressibility and the coefficient of volume decrease which is uh, considered the coefficient of compressibility uh, which is uh, the like the slope of the relation between the void ratio and the uh, stress and the stress uh, or the effective stress like from this equation but here and uh, the coefficient uh, of consolidation which is the slope of this curve and if we are in the unloading case like here the slope of this curve will be the swelling index and those are very important parameters we already knew the coefficient uh, of consolidation uh, 
coefficient of consolidation which is uh, represent the percentage of consolidation and we knew how to calculate this from uh, lab from two different techniques and we knew what is the time factor we looked at the radial uh, time uh, radial uh, coefficient of consolidation and the time factor in radial direction to be able to do some sand drain and we saw the procedures how to calculate this and uh, you design your sand drain so so as we can see uh, now we will go back to our lecture and to look at how we can uh, how we can uh, start with uh, uh, with a modified came clay so modified came clay is a model used to simulate the clay material the general relation between the volume change and the pressure in, in, in clay ground uh, can be expressed using the concept of normal consolidation line and over consolidation line we didn't know what's normal consolidation and over consolidation so it's just a material model depend on the normal consolidation and over consolidation and uh, the over consolidation they refer it to that welling line and the stress increase for over consolidation line in the normal uh, consolidation line so if we just looked here we can see this is the volume change this is the pressure this is the line of normally consolidated soil this is the of over consolidated and this in the stress strain relationship this is the linear uh, linear and this is the hardening part so this is considered like linear uh, uh, linear model uh, linear uh, 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 linear plastic uh, model because both the elastic part and the plastic part are linear in order to simulate this uh, part in the in the, in the software to uh, to identify this material model you have to have the over consolidation ratio you you need to have uh, the slope of the console line lambda and kappa the slope of the over consolidated uh, over consolidated line and the slope of critical state line so you need the slope of this line and the slope of this line in a simple way then this is the allowable tensile stress uh, so k is over consolidated uh, line and normally consolidated line and m is a critical state line how to calculate them the material proper properties of the ground are generally uh, obtained from the one dimension consolidation test and the compression index cc and the swelling index cs can be obtained from the void ratio so in order to calculate uh, we already know how to calculate cs uh, cac and cs the consolidation and uh, cons compression index and swelling index we calculate them from the uh, consolidation or odometer test and through this equation we calculate lambda and kappa and for the critical uh, state line um, we calculate it through uh, angle of internal friction through equation 6 sine phi over 3 minus sine phi this is the interior uh, angle of triaxial compression test we can look at the modified came clay model and how we can calculate it manually and how we can draw the uh, and how we can draw the uh, yield surface and everything in this excel sheet so this is uh, a spreadsheet we de uh, developed to calculate uh, or to simulate the modified came clay uh, model uh, here the first one is for normally consolidated uh, clay first thing in order to, we have to to, to uh, add the uh, lambda and kappa and n and some uh, some properties uh, of the soil here and this uh, spreadsheet here like you start to simulate this so we can look about uh, uh, the came clay model here first and this is the equation came clay background you need to know that this is the mean stress this is the shear stress uh, the deviatoric stress and how to calculate the void ratio and through this equation for normally consolidated line as we can see here this is the part of the came clay model 
as we can see this is uh, lambda this is kaba this is new kaba for the unloading case and uh, as we can see here this is the relationship between both this is how we calculate e for throw kaba and throw lambda and for the critical line uh, uh, critical state line critical state line is a line which defines that there is no volume change after this uh, line uh, so this is what we mean by critical state critical state there is no volumetric change after uh, after this for normally consolidated and over consolidated uh, clay over consolidated clay we can see the behavior is hardening uh, hardening taking hardening behavior but for normally consolidated clay uh, we take this as uh, we take this uh, normally consolidated clay as uh, uh, softening behavior we can see this is the extension and the com uh, compression here is the critical state line as we can see here we can calculate it from this equation as we see earlier so uh, this is how we can calculate this as we can see here this is the critical state line and this is the first uh, the first yield surface uh, of the yield function how to draw this yield function we draw it through this equation here and uh, inside this yield surface there will be elastic behavior outside of this yield surface is elastic behavior in this side this is uh, softening behavior in the other side is hardening behavior and um, uh, uh, when we st when we d d uh, change uh, the value of PC, this uh, the size of the yield surface start to increase and start to change. So this is the shape of the yield surface in 3D. And as we can see here, this is B node. So the hardening behavior. Uh, as we can see here this is the hardening behavior with increasing the value of the yield surface start to increase and for the softening and this is the relation between shear stress shear strain the softening behavior as we can see here that uh, the value of the bc mean effective stress decreases and this is b node yield surface at critical state line and this is the softening uh, yeah this is the softening i just switch it so as i as i said before this is the softening behavior because the source reach too hard uh, like big then softening again this is the hardening one and uh, by increasing the value of the bc that uh, the yield surface increase and for the softening behavior it decreases until reaching the critical state so you can just follow these equations and you can understand this is how we calculate each behavior we can share this uh, file if someone interesting how this uh, material model has been created and you can just see this is a projection of uh, this yield surface in uh, BE uh, relationship as we can see this is the equation we need to follow if we follow this equation exactly this is uh, b uh, and this is bc and as we can see by increasing for the softening for the normally consolidated soil uh, which take the behavior of the hardening behavior and we can see here that the bc increases or the size of the yield surface uh, increases from this value to this value and we already defined this value before and we can calculate this q and this factor to uh, and uh, to draw the relation between here to draw this uh, yield surface so each one of these each one each point so this is the value for point a b one two until we reach to the end if we saw the output for the normally consolidated uh, soil so this is the relation between uh, this is the relation this is the shape of the yield surface as we can see this is Q and this is B and this is the relation of the uh, uh, of the uh, yield surfaces and if we went here to the over consolidated uh, uh, clay we're gonna find that these values as we can see here it decreases 
because it takes a softening behavior and uh, by following the same steps we can see that this is our output here uh, as we can see this is the yield surface and uh, this is the behavior of uh, water pressure or the, the change in water pressure with shear stress this is the relationship between stress and strain as we can see the hardening behavior here and we can see the hardening behavior as uh, a softening behavior here but in the normal consolidation we can see the hardening behavior so it's this is show us the how we can look at our models this is hardening behavior here so when you start to look at the model you can uh, you can just uh, see uh, this is a comparison here like this is the normally consolidated uh, and this is the normally consolidated this is over consolidated this is a change in the behavior uh, between uh, each one and this is the yield surface as we can see here so uh, you need to understand the component of the model so you can start to model your problem now we will go to the software and we will start to model our problem so the model we are going to talk about today is as we can see it's uh, multi-layer and we have a raft here and this raft will be on piles and we'll start to load it and we will have layers of clay and we will see the effect so in this uh, tutorial we will like talk about the weak stratum and apply modified game clay model to si simulate the limit state behavior then we will start to model bile element and verify settlement of weak stratum according to bile second uh, skin fraction and then uh, set construction stage and time step for consolidation analysis then analyze the excess pore water pressure distribution consolidation settlement according to time then finally we're gonna verify structures settlement and pile skin friction according to time here as we can see we have uh, layers of the uh, rock then weathering rock to layer of clay and this here silty sand we have uh, four, uh, three bank, uh, layers of uh, banking and we have here the layer of excavation this is back filling and this is the structure and this, those are the piles the excavation part will be replaced with uh, will be replaced with uh, a raft uh, eight half meter by eight half meter and the arrangement of uh, pile will be half meter and the thickness of will be uh, eight centimeters and this is the uh, uh, spacing between the piles the layer here will be uh, clay one and all the layer will have modified came clay the clay for the clay material and for the other material will have more column material and for the structure it will have uh, elastic material with concrete uh, here's a Boisson ratio yeah we need weight the K node no problem and all of this parameter for the and here K Z and uh, ky and uh, kx ky kz uh, permeability in different uh, direction and the void ratio as we can see for the nonlinear parameter for over consolidation uh, consolidation ratio as we can see it's one for the both clay layer and this is lambda and kappa for came clay and the critical uh, the slope of the critical state uh, line as we can see 0.18 uh, for the cohesion and the friction angle of the other layer as we can see here uh, they are mentioned here for the boil as we can see this is the uh, parameters for the boil we already knew how to simulate the ultimate shear force and shear stiffness modulus and this is the boil tip uh, resistance so now we will go to AutoCAD and we will start to model our problem 
I already draw the layer here so as we can see we have this is a different layer and the thickness of each layer so this is the bedrock and it's 14 meters and this is the top layer and this is the layer of clay thickness 5 meter and the other clay layer will be 5 meter and the silty sand layer here will be 5 meter and we have three embankment layer with three meter we can make here offset three meter and we can make extend here with here and this is the place of 20 meter here and it will have the structure if we went back to the presentation those are 20 meters of backfill and here the size of the excavation will be from down here will be uh, 8 meter by 8.5 by 8.5 now i will go to the software again here this is the autocad as we can see this is the distance which will define up there and for down here it will be five meters so here it will be here Twenty meters and we're gonna make offset five meter for the down here and the distance down there will be eight and a half meter so that means it will be eight and a half meter uh, from post there uh, eight and a half meter minus uh, 20 minus eight and a half meter over two it will be we can calculate it very fast Um, 20 minus eight and a half meter and this is by 2 so it's 5.75 so 5.75 and here 5.75 so this will be the other layer here so and from here there will be bile 19 meter and this pile will move it in this direction 1.5 and we will replicate it each two meters here for piles as we can see here we're gonna make save here dx f and we say save yes and now we start to open our gts and we will start to create a new model three D and we will go here to import two D we will get it from our lecture and we say apply cancel so here we will extrude this line and we will choose this direction to be 20 meters 
in positive y direction and the same with this one it will be eight and a half meter and it will be in this direction but since it's not a good line so we're gonna choose this line and here we are going to choose this line from edge here and we are going to extrude it eight and a half in this direction and we will start to move it in this direction 5.75 and we say apply so it will come at the middle exactly then we will start to draw this line and we will start to translate them in this direction we'll translate them this number plus 1.25 so we will translate them 7 meter it will be 1.25 plus the 5.75 so we're gonna add 7 meter here and we already choose the direction so it will be here and we say apply then we will come here to choose those line and we copy them three times uh, each two meters three times and we can see in this direction And we say apply cancel we already now made these like we can select front selection only and we can choose this one and we say delete Control Z front selection only it's fine we don't have to do it now just keep it we'll start to make our faces so we're gonna go here and make face we're gonna choose those and apply choose those apply we will create now our faces apply this one make face rectangular now we will come here and we choose those and we choose this one and we start to move them in this direction 50 meter 
and we say apply we control that again we choose this and we choose this and select the direction here and we choose 50 and we say apply cancel so now we don't need any of this element we delete them so this would be our initial model now I will start to extrude so I'm going to choose this faces and I will choose this direction and I will extrude it to 120 and I will say apply and I will come here to hide the solid and I will go to this one and I will extrude it 10 meters in this direction and say apply cancel I will hide it and I will now start to create this part here so I'm gonna cho uh, choose or use new order called loof so this loof will start to ask me to choose two faces and apply so now if I choose everything now I created all my problem so I'm going to go to mesh like sorry to auto connect here boolean so he share everything and connect everything together so if i came here and i choose this one and i set hide and cancel i will take off the surface now everything is connected as we can see here now I will go here to imprint hide this one and hide this one and hide this layer and hide those I don't need this one show I can imprint here and I can start to imprint curves so I will start to imprint this layer using these tools here the bias and I'm choosing the shortest direction and I'm saying apply so as we can see here if we choose the transparency to be high we can see inside them now we go back to show all the solids again
we make the transparency here as well like this so now I will save my model and I will go to mesh and material and I will start to create my material my material is isotropic and first one is structure and it's gonna be 2.1 a7 and the Poisson ratio the Poisson ratio 0 0.2 and 25 porous is 25 and we say ok then first one is clay 1 and choosing modified cam clay and here we're choosing the models for elasticity 1 e4 uh, 0 0.4 for Boston ratio 17 for, for gamma 1 k node 0 0.5 and porous will be 20 and 2 for initial void issue Import, this issue is important now since we are doing consolidation analysis drain and 1.73 a minus 3 and this value is equal in x and y but not in z direction 8.64 a minus 4 and we say non-linearity here is or weight ratio depends on permeability 0.5 0.5 no problem and for non-linearity here it's 0. Point, lambda 0. 0.221 and OCR 1 0.221 and cover is 0. 0.015 and the critical state line 0.18 so this is clay one then we'll start to add clay two here in nonlinearity at 0.32 and this is gonna be 0.029 sorry and for porosity it's gonna be here is the same one as uh, K and here 1.5 and 20 for voice ratio 1.5 and for general it is the same parameter so we are not gonna change anything here we say okay this is clay 2 more coulomb for the banking Models for the state T5 E4 and 0.3 18 or actually 90 19 sorry and K 0.74 and 4 porous 21 and Boston and initial voice ratio 0.5 here for drainage 1.728 and this is the same here 
and finally 0.864 and this is 0.5 and for this one cohesion 19 and 25 then silty sand it is the same on the swasticity then 0 0.3, 18, 0 0.6 20 all point five then one point two seven the same drain drainage finally this is twenty and twenty five so this is for silty sand then wizard wizard rock One point five E five Boston ratio O point two and twenty and one one four K node. Then for the porous material it's um twenty one zero point five and the same drainage and for nonlinearity at but this is there is another zero here in z direction and nonlinearity here it's gonna be 133 one not adding the lengthy angle here and say enter and final soil which is soft rock so this will be 3 a5 and this is 0 0.1523 0 0.1523 and for k it's 0 0.5 for porous it's a 20 23 0 0.5 for drainage it is the same values except this is way less we have to modify the other one and there is another zero here for nonlinearity this is 20 38 we'll use the software calculate this and here there is zero one zero one and we say okay then we go here to isotropic okay this is done for the material now go to the properties first thing we will create 3d properties we say here structure Clay one, clay two, banking, silty sand, wizard rock. Uh, 
and finally here soft rock cancel we go to 1d and we start to model our pile and we go here to section it's gonna be pipe 0.5 and this will be 0.78 and we say ok ok close we'll go back to material and we will start to create interface pile and for shear modulus here we go here and 5 to 6.3 And for a stiffness modulus here, it's 10, 5 to 6. And finally, we will take this value here on 0. And we say scan friction. And we go here to properties and we start to create other while tipping resistance and it will be 400, 1, 600 and 1, 6, 0, 0, 0. and we say apply And here from pile 1D pile, and now we save our model. Now I will start to go to meshing and I will go to 3D mesh. I will choose everything here and I will choose the size of the mesh to be 3 and hybrid and i will say apply so now it will start to mesh everything as we can see here everything seems fine no problem so i will go here and i will start to go to mesh here so I start to rename them banking one clay two or sorry clay one silty sand soft rock Banking three Wizard Rock Banking two Clay two here this is gonna be back filling and finally this mesh will be in two bars the top part is a structure second part will be the excavation so i will come here and i will generate um new mesh set so I will come here and I will say new mesh set new mesh set I'm gonna call it excavation and I will come here to say include and exclude so the lower part here it will be excavation and I will say apply cancel so and 
this part will be structure and now I will show everything now we have to go to parameters to assign all the material 3d so for this part it will be banking for this part it will be silty sand for this part clay one for this part clay two for this part weathering soil finally soft rock and this part will be structure and say close so I will come here and I will show so by property color as we can see here so this is the embankment silty banking clay one and this is for back filling and this is for excavation and this is for the structure part and for back filling here I will select parameter again 3d and it will be an 30 cent part and I will say apply and cancel so now I show everything here as we can see it's okay so now I will just hide all the meshing and I delete this geometry and I will go now to mesh 1d I will select all the piles and I will say 1 meter and I'm gonna call them piles and I will say ok done now I will go to pile tip resistance and I will choose all piles and I will go here to add properties for them and we'll call them enter face and I will call this pile interface and I will select all of them I say apply I come to pile tip resistance and I select everything here and I say pile tip and cancel now everything is already great so now I will go to the tab of seepage and consolidation so I will choose first thing the drainage here if we looked here I will go for the the constraints and I will add auto constraints I will call it ground and then I will go to advanced and I will say rotational constraints for the pile and I will just choose the pile and say apply cancel so if I uh, hide everything and I just choose the pile here we can see that piles are okay we show there its axis as we can see here they are moving together with no problem so we are doing good here 
so now I will go to self weight and I will make the gravity here and I will create the gravity apply cancel now I don't need this I will show the top clay and the other clay material and I will go to drainage condition uh, and I will choose drainage condition here and I will choose from face so I will go here and I will show some of the um, geometry solids so I will hide those and I will hide those so I will go to drainage condition to define the surface which goes as uh, a phase here so it will be this face and this face so this is the faces will have drainage I will call this drainage through these faces and we will say apply finally I have to define the uh, the part that will not have any consolidation so it will be from we can show this from uh, element here it will be the excavation part and the uh, uh, backfilling part here so I choose them and say none consolidation and say apply now I go to the change properties so there are soil now I have to change them to another thing as structure so we call this structure so the material will be concrete and we say apply now we already defined all the boundary condition and everything so now we go to analysis and we go to construction stages here and we choose consolidation analysis and we add one and we start our we start our modeling so now we will go to add the backfill banking one two three sorry not embankment we will call this original and we're adding the backfill we're adding clay one clay two we would show it by activation clay one clay two we're adding excavation part silty rock wizard clay ground condition and gravity we will clear the displacement and we add water content at at level 36 and we say save but we have to define the time step here it will be on one day let's make it just one second and say okay and save result generate and we say okay save close so we will just come here and we say this by day and we just come here and time step will be one day save generate and we say okay save then we will go because the main concept here is there is no structure sorry here so th because the main concept here is uh, the water level and the time so now for the next one it will be excavation 
and at this time we will excavate the uh, we will excavate here the excavation and backfilling so for the backfilling here it will be like this and we will do this in one day and save generate okay save new and this time we'll start to installation and this time we will start to install the backfill and we install the excavation pile tip pile piles and uh, structure and we will add the drainage and non consolidation and rotational and the, uh, and the structure and we say save and all of this will be done in 10 days and we do it in five steps save generate everything and i say okay and save now i will start with banking one and for banking one we will get banking three here because we added them in backward and we will start to add this banking in 100 days and we will put them in 10 steps save generate we say ok then we save and we make new then we will like after we add the embankment we will start to wait for another 100 day to for the consolidation to occur so we say ignorance for 100 day just waiting and we'll put them in 10 steps save generate okay save new banking 2 and we will add banking 2 add this in 100 day and this will be in 10 steps and I will say save generate and I will say okay save and new ignorance here time is step 100 it will be 100 uh, one step sorry okay save generate okay and we call this ignorance and save then new banking 3 and it will be at this time banking 1 and we say time step 100 we add this in 10 steps save generate and we say ok and we say save final step it will be on 730 days 10 steps save generate ok save close close now at this time we'll go to analysis from construction stages run one here in analysis control initial from k node k node and everything here is okay the same non-linearity nothing to be considered here initial initial okay we say apply cancel we save our model and we start to run it but before we run it we show our simulation here for construction stages original excavation installation banking one waiting bank two waiting bank three waiting and final and waiting so now we will start to run our model and we say ok so our model will be start to run it will take time we will wait and we will start to view our 
results now I can start to view our results so I can come to the end here and I can see the displacement after the consolidation so we can see the total translation here we can make it to here I just want to show you something I wanna see here the minimum and the maximum so the maximum deformation here the maximum settlement is 70 centimeter and we can see here that the consolidation is increasing and this is if we show the vertical settlement we can see that value is changing very much we can draw here a cutting diagram from this point to here and we can show the results now in x direction or we can show it in z direction but reverse so i don't need the minimum and the maximum so we can say okay we can see here the values of the settlement decreases we can see another thing here if we got this one like this and we can make iso clipping here reverse reverse in y direction reverse and we say add and we say close I don't want to see edges I come here and I go to stages and I go to this and results here and I do this and I can start to see the total arrangement here off and we can take a prop here at this node and we can see this is the settlement at the early beginning at this node it's zero and we can see here it start to increase with the increase of time 10 centimeters 18 centimeters 15 sorry centimeters until it reached almost 2 centimeters here we can see another point here it show outside here so we can show we can show the see the result here again
We can sh show the vectors. So now we can see the effect of the the effect of the uh, or improvement of the soil. So we can just go to extract here and in extract we can go here to mesh and I hide embankment. Or banking one banking two and there's one more banking three and I tell him show me the displacement CZ at point like like this one for example and give me from all cases and I will say table and I will sh see the develop of the value here with time show graph okay so we can see here at the different stages and this is zero that the settlement increases this is the first at the ground then it started to increase with installation then embankment then uh, waiting then installation then waiting and so on we can see the results for the for the boil or we can see here the nodal seepage we can see the total head here from all cases we can see pool water and we can see here in the 3D sewage we can see hydraulic gradient here the model is pretty large so this is the values here as we can see for the hydraulic gradient in x direction y and z and this is the flow velocity as we can see the movement of the water and in z direction as we can see here we can see as well solid stresses we can see the excess pool water pressure here it's developed in the clay material or clay soil here so this is the, uh, the place where excess water pressure, pressure has developed we can see now and beam, uh, beam forces you can see in the results now as you want it's not a big deal you can view from depending on the other lectures we had so here I want to show the piles and I show moment in y direction as we can see here this is the moment due to the movement of the embankment and we can see the shear in z direction and the moment in z direction is as we can see and this is the axial forces on the pile and you can view all your results as you want 
it's not gonna be a problem so as we can see now this is our problem this is how we can do consolidation analysis I will end our problem our lecture at this point and we will start a new topic in the next lecture see you next lecture and thank you